Welcome back guys. In this video, this is the final episode of the Python 3 Crash Course 2020. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of testing in Python. I'll mainly uh, focus on unique testing and I will explain to you what it what it is in a minute and maybe do some example of low tests if there is time. Um, these are advanced concepts uh, so if you don't understand something don't worry it might take a while before everything clicks. Uh, so this is brief review. Uh, I suggest you to visit the documentation to read more and projects writing your own code and tests. I will leave a link in the description uh, of this video uh, for you uh, so you can practice. So let's get started and see what is unit testing. So unit tests are used to test small bits of code uh, like functions and method in our program. program. <coughs> Uh, they are isolated, so they do not interact with other services or software that our code may be used. So with unit tests, we make sure our code behaves correctly and does it, it does not fail because of other services used like an, an interruption to the network or a failed database connection. So we test the single unit, so a function or a method call. Uh, so the unit tests focus on functions and methods for um, a number of <coughs> test cases so that we can make sure that our code works even with more uh, edge cases and more cases we test uh, the better our code will be so the goal is to verify that a small isolated part in our code works correctly without introducing unexpected bugs so how it, it is done um, what unit test does is actually check that a given uh, a specific input, our uh, code, um, the output of our code matches our expectation. So let's uh, get started by opening Visual Studio Code. This is uh, Visual Studio Code, the ID that I'm using. And in here I will create a new file. <coughs> and I'm going uh, <clears throat> to write a simple script in here um, so that we can test it uh, writing unit tests. So um, let's start by uh, saving this file and we will save it in a, a new folder that I'm going to call tests and in here I will write my script. You can mm, put this file outside in the root folder and then you put the um, tests in the test file or I'm just doing that uh, for simplicity. So um, I'm going to call this uh, lower names pi so I'm going to write a script that, given a simple list of name uh, converters at the another list uh, with all the names in lower cases. So let's write the shebang first. Okay, now uh, in the first line of my code. I am going to define a function and I'm going to call it print names lower. And in here I'm going to pass a an attribute, so name attribute, names, so it's a list, and I'm going to specify that. Uh, and then column, semicolon, column. And then in here we will add the documentation block. So print um, all names in the list as lower case. Okay. And then let's um, 
create a new list. And then now we can loop over the names that we pass to the functions. So for name in names, uh, what we can do is name lower, append, and then now name dot lower. So we call the lower method on the thing, so we can convert this code into lower cases, and then we will return the list. So we append this uh, string to the list, the name's lower list, which is empty for now, and then we return it. Okay. So that's the function that we will test in a minute. So, uh, as I said, this function converts a list of strings into lower cases and returns a new list. So let's first see how we could test this. So um, let's open up the terminal here in Visual Studio Code and then Python 3, we go we open the interpreter, and then now uh, I'm going to import this uh, function as a module. Uh, so I use the from keyword, so lower names is the name of the file, so that's the module in this case. Import, and I'm going to specify the name of the function. Okay, so like that, got an error, lower names, no module, there is a module like that, why not? So. It's failing. That's weird. Let's try to move this out and try again. Yes, now it works. Okay, um, so just move the module that you want to import outside this test folder and the Python interpreter will find it. Uh, I'm not sure why it doesn't, uh, but yeah, because we were not in the right folder, I guess. We were. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we imported the module. Uh, now that we, we can use the print names lower function and run a unit test in it. Since we are focusing on a specific function, uh, our test is isolated and does not take anything else into account. Uh, so no other functions are considered to run this test. So more tests we write, the better we will be our code. For now, let's use this function to print a list of names and then see the output. We got a list here. So this is the list. And as you see, we will get another list with the same names that we passed inside this function has a lower case. So in this example, we have successfully run a test, um, a unit test. So we test a specific function uh, and updated the output that we expected given the uh, input that we passed. However, our goal is to run uh, unit tests automatically and test our function with multiple test cases uh, that will help us spot bugs and fix them before releasing our code. So let's see how we can automate unit tests in Python. 
Um, so we can quit. Exit. So we can exit uh, from the interpreter. And now, uh, let's see. To get started, we automated test. We need first uh, to write our tests in a separate file. <clears throat> this file should follow the naming convention, uh, which means use the same name of the module that we are testing. So in this case, lower names is the name of the module and append at the end of the file name, the test. Um, so mm, to write a test for a module, um, we will call um, the test file in this case lower names uh, tests um, and we will also use a python module called um, unit tests so let's see uh, so in here i'm going to create a file and i'm going to call it lower name test dot pi and let me copy the shebang so i don't have to write it and then now I am going to first import the module that I want to test. So from like we did in the terminal a second ago. So from a lower names import uh, the name of the function was print names lower. So we import this function from this module. So as you see, the import. Uh, statement is successful. We don't have any error. Uh, so he, the Python he found the module and the function correctly. So now we import the unit test. Oh. Okay, so we import this module and how does it work? To use the unit test module, we need to import it at the top of our test file, um, just under the import statement uh, where we import the um, module that we want to test. Um, and then <clears throat> uh, inside our um, test file, we should use um, the classes provided by the unit test module and its method. Uh, so that we can run our test. In uh, particular, we will use the test case class as a parent class of our class, the one that we are going to define now. Uh, so we can then call its method to run our test. So first we need to um, write a class. So class, and then we say test lower name. So we find the name. And then in here we will use, as I said, the unit test dot test case um, class. And then in here we will start writing our test case. Um, to run uh, the test function um, code automatically, we need to instruct Python to run our unit test. So at the end of our file, before we write any uh, test, we need to remember that we need to call the main function uh, from the unit test module so that our um, script can run the unit test. So unit test dot main and that's how uh, the Python um, code will execute the tests when we run this file. So uh, our test file is now ready and we can start writing our first test case. Um, so let's see uh, how, what we should do. We need to write a method. So every time we want to test a specific, um, to write a specific test case, we need to write a method inside the class that we defined for this module. So now we are going to define a test is lower and then we use self keyword, self keyword. So we refer to the instance of this class. And then uh, we need to first uh, define a test case. So test case, I'm going to create a variable inside this method. Uh, and I'm going to call it test case. And from here, I'm going to run my function. 
print name lower and we need to pass a variable um, a list uh, of names let me grab this one that we used before and then we pass this list to the function and what, what do we expect uh, to happen when we run this function so we create another um, another variable uh, with the expected result so I'm going to copy this uh, list again and all lowercase so that should that should be the output that we will get by running this function so we should see another list uh, with all the string inside the list as lower cases so now we need to call uh, a method of the unit test um, test, class, test case so that is assert so self what, what assert does it actually checks that um, these two variables are equal, so I'm going to use a third equal. There are a number of different methods that you can use uh, depending on what, what you want to test. So if you want to test the two results are equal or not equal, or the, the dictionary is equal, uh, so you expect a function to a method or a function to return the dictionary, and you want to check if the dictionary is equal to another dictionary that you expect or if the, the output of your function is an instance of a, a specific object so if it's a list or it's a dictionary a set or it's a number or whatever so in this case i'm going to use the the assert equal because i want to check i want to assert uh, i use the assert method to check if these two are equal so if this function returns the same result of this expect of what I am expecting uh, the output uh, will be. So first parameter is the test case and the second parameter is the expected result. So uh, we saved it we saved that inside a variable so that we don't have to expect it. So we don't have to write all in one line, but if you if we want, we can simply grab this and paste it uh, instead of the test case variable, and then we can print this and print and paste it here as a second uh, parameter of this assert equal function. So now um, we are pretty much ready to run our first test. So inside our test class, we start writing our first test case. Uh, we used the assert equal method uh, of the unit test module to verify that the given uh, a specific input, so in this case, the input is this function call, uh, given a specific input, we get our uh, expected result. So in this case, this is the expected result. The list has a lower cases, which is in this case, as I said, um, this list. Uh, to run our test file, first we need to make sure it's executable and uh, we can do so um, by opening the terminal. Let me cd into the test folder. Uh, in my case, the file is ex executable already, uh, but if it's not in your system, you can run ca mod u plus x so user uh, you assign to the user um, the execute um, privileges and then you type the name of the file in this case is lower uh, names underscore names underscore test and then you run this code and the file becomes executable and you can run the first test by uh, typing dot uh, forward slash and the name of the file that you just wrote and then press enter and there is an, an error lower names so it says now that there is no module uh, named 
lower names, module not found, but we did write this bloody module. For some reason, that should work, but for some reason it's not working. Uh, but for the purpose of this quick tutorial, I'm going to move it inside this folder so we can run it and it should pass. Okay, so um, now uh, the test run runs correctly, and as you see, um, we got as a result run one test in n second that it takes, and okay, so that's our test case, and it's it is successful. If we instead, let's say that we expected the different result like that, and we run the code, we see that we got a test failure. So the test failed and it tells us exactly where the test fails. So it says a session error because the first list, the list that we expected to be equal, so lists, these differ, they are different. And where exactly the difference is in is the last atom of the list because they are not equal. Okay, uh, but want it to pass, so that's how we make it pass. Uh, so we have written our first test case. We can now move forward and more and write some more tests if we want. Uh, let's put this bit back a bit uh, down. And then let's write another test case. Um, let's say that we want to uh, check if the return value is a list. So uh, define um, test returns a list. So make sure that every time you write a test, the name of the test has some meaning, so that reading it um, by reading it, you can understand what this test does. So test returns a list. Um, in this case, we expect that this test, when it runs, uh, checks that the return value of the function that we are calling is a list. So test case again is equal to let's grab this again. So we don't have to type. And then now, uh, what is the expected result is list. So it is an instance of the list object. And let's run. Um, so this time I'm going to use a different assert method, which is the assert is instance. And that, as the name says, checks that the object is a list. So the test case should return list. So we expect the result to be list. So expected. We use this variable that we just defined to make this session. And that's it, so we can run it and let's check our result. And yes, we run two tests and both tests uh, run successfully. If that was a string, for, for instance, we can see that one of the tests fails. So we run two tests, but we got one failure. And the session is wrong, so a session error, and that tells us what's wrong. So in this case, we expect it to be a list and the, the code runs successfully. Uh, let's run another one. Uh, we could check now that a specific element is in the list. So def test, if we don't, if I'm not wrong, uh, if we don't use the test at the beginning of a test method, a method that we want uh, test case, we should see only one uh, result. So make sure that every time you write a test, the name of your method uh, includes as the first, um, at, at first, the test word 
otherwise the test won't be recognized as a test. Okay, so now let's move uh, forward and let's check if the test so test is You can call this uh, element test element is in the list if you want to be more specific uh, and then test case equal to again let's write uh, copy that so we are always testing the same method over and over but uh, every time we check if uh, the result um, that we expect is correct if you for instance if this function was wrong was changed by someone else and the result of this function instead of being this one uh, was different for instance let's say that someone changes our function and returns the name when we run our code let me just pass this when we run our code you will see that we got two failures so this one passed because we didn't finish to assert so we run through tests but we got two failures because of course the assertion error uh, the first assertion error is in in here so we got the um, method that fails so test is lower it's failing because the assertion was that the name uh, the return value was list instead we got just a single element of the list so just a string and it's in uh, it's not even in lower cases and that's definitely different from the list that we expected so we got an error so if someone changes your code and running unit test you realize that something is wrong and you make sure you don't push this code to production uh, because the unit test failing uh, so um, that's why it's important for us to learn and um, become comfortable uh, using unit tests and test-driven development. So uh, let's write this test. So we want to uh, use another assert method. And this time the method is assert in this checks that uh, our we forgot to use the expect to write the expected one, but we actually did. I didn't know. I didn't forget to write that. Uh, but I'm going to pass the expected result in here uh, uh, directly. So I'm going to. Uh, say that I expect uh, to see this element so I am expecting to see Fabio in lower cases uh, inside the list that it's in, that it's returned by the test case so this way we run the code and again we call three tests running and all run successfully and so far all tests we wrote passed because we passed to the function an input that we know uh, it will produce the output that we wanted so i knew every time that this was successful uh, because uh, that's what because we wrote the code in first place so we know how it works and so we know what to expect and so we are testing we are writing three test cases that we know they passed but in this case someone uh, in just in case someone changes our code we by running these three uh, the first three tests we realize immediately that something is wrong so uh, but what what if we want if we instead of passing to this uh, function at least despite when you call it the function tells you that it expects at least uh, someone passes a number which is not not desirable uh, so that's uh, an example of an edge case so an edge case are inputs that pass 
when passed to our script producing an expected behavior. Uh, so let's try it now and see uh, what happens. So test. Okay, I'm going to write the test case this time. Let me just copy the name of the function. And instead of passing a list or a string on something, uh, I'm going to pass something to it that is not iterable. So I'm going to say 20. So you cannot iterate through a number uh, like that. Uh, so expected. I am expecting that this uh, returns the same number. So let's say that self. We are going again to use assert true. And then say test case. We forgot to write this to save this to a function, to a variable. Test case. And then we expect the test case to be equal to the expected output. And let's run this code and see what happens. We know this is going to fail because so we run four tests and one of them failed. And the error that we are getting is type error in it object is not iterable. So uh, now it's different part when we actually need to, um, we found an edge case and we need to fix the code uh, to make sure it returns the value that we expect. So in this case, we want that when calling this function uh, with a number, it just returns the number that you pass to it because there is nothing to turn into a lower case. So, um, What, what should we do? What should we do? We should now first add a check to see if the type of the object passed to our function is an integer. And if uh, so, we will return it as it is. So let's go inside our lower names function. And right here, let's check what this names variable is. So if uh, not, not parentheses, if names, if type names, so we are checking what kind of variable, uh, what kind of element uh, or what kind of object this uh, variable um, contains, and then say, is it, if it's an integer, so if it's the int, um, object, we will return it as it is. So you are passing an integer, so you're not passing a list of names. Uh, so we want that our code uh, behaves exactly in this way. In this case, we want that it returns the same number that you passed without any modification and doesn't not run this other bit of code because it won't Successfully, it will throw an error. So let's save this and let's run our test again. So before it failed, let's see now. So we are now uh, seeing that we are that our code runs successfully for tests. So this one is running as expected because, of course, we um, changed the code and fixed this hedge case. So that could be a bug. Uh, so and unexpected behavior. So when the user um, pass an input to our, our function, something that we did not um, anticipate, the code fails in a way that we maybe couldn't think of. And by testing, by writing tests first, uh, we anticipate this kind of situation and we uh, make sure that we write the code and make it behave behave exactly how we want. So, um, an alternative way, depending on how we want our program to behave, uh, we might want to show an error message. So our function could look a bit different. Uh, 
so the test case will be different too. So let's comment this out for now and let's uh, first um, write a different test case. So let's say that we want to throw an error when this function is called with a number. So we are going to use another assertion in a different assertion method. So let's define again the same function, same method uh, for simplicity. I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to use the with keyword this time uh, self assert rises and it should rise type error so you passed to my function the wrong type of um, data type so that should give you type error uh, and then let's see uh, when we call it 20 so that's how uh, we can use the assert arises uh, method um, using the with syntax and then it's not uh, we don't know we don't write that in the same way we wrote the test before you can check the documentation uh, for more details and let's um, check our code now and see what we got so we keep these changes here so it's not going to rise any error, but it's going to return the number 20 as it is. And that should give us another failure. So we failed the test number four, test number, because the accession error that uh, returns is type error not rise. So the function does not rise any error uh, because our function does not, uh, it's not assigned to that at the moment. So we need to make it rise the error. So we still check, we still want to check if the type of this attribute that we pass to the variable is a, an integer. And in this case, instead of returning the, na the names, so in this case, the number, we rise, we use the rise keyword to rise an error. Like that. And then now when we run our test again, we got a four test running successfully. So you could do one or the other, depending on how you want your uh, program to behave. So if you want to throw an error, uh, if the user uh, is passing the wrong um, that type, or you want to return something to the user, so it depends by you. Uh, so um, now, um, <clears throat> so far we wrote all these tests and uh, we knew exactly how our code works uh, because we wrote it. Uh, but what if someone has write the code and you need to write tests or on their code and you don't exactly know how their code works so this way of testing in the case you know how the code works because you wrote it or you studied the code and you know exactly how it works in uh, in this case in python is called white box testing and it means that <clears throat> the person who writes the codes and the tests and the tests has a deep knowledge of how the code works before writing any test. Uh, on the opposite, if we write tests before writing the actual code, so it doesn't matter if someone else write, wrote your code, but even if you write tests before writing any code, that is called uh, black box testing. So with black box testing, the person who writes the code doesn't know how the code works yet, but he know what the output should be. Um, so we say that uh, unit tests focus on testing um, an, an isolated part of the code, like functions and method, but there are also other 
types of uh, tests. Uh, so um, they are integration tests. They verify that the integration between different pieces of our code works as expected. So in case you have a database, uh, your test integration test should check that the connection with the, DB, the database works. Uh, or we have regression tests uh, that are written as part of a debugging process uh, and they verify that an issue uh, has been fixed once it was identified. So we identify a bug, we fix it, and we run the test, uh, we write the test before fixing the code to throw the bugging uh, behavior. And then uh, we fix the code and the test help us make sure the error will not be introduced again in the future. Then we have another kind of test, the smoke test, and that comes from um, hardware verification. So when you uh, build new hardware and you make a mistake, your hardware maybe starts smoking uh, in um, in software development, they, uh, the smoke test verify that the program doesn't have major bugs and run correctly before running any other test. And then we have another type of test, which is the load test, uh, which verifies that the system behaves well when it's under pressure, so when it's under significant load. So the goal of, of the integration test is to verify that each part of the code works. So if the code makes, for instance, an API call uh, or, um, um, chat or needs to grab some data from the database or call uh, other external services, the integration test verify that everything works correctly. Usually we need to create a test environment uh, for our software. Um, before uh, uh, writing this kind of test because we don't want, for instance, to um, run our test on the production database, um, but uh, we prefer to, for instance, create a test database where we can put inside tests um, records and then we can grab them, we can update them using our test suite. Uh, instead of writing things directly into our production database that could um, damage our real data. Software tests, um, uh, smoke tests in software um, do like a sanity check to find major bugs in our program and they mainly answer a question like does our program run? So they check uh, they run as a first um, thing and they check if the actual software is running before doing anything else because otherwise they know uh, that it's sure that all the other tests will fail. Um, then, uh, for instance, Google says that for a web service, uh, the smoke test would be um, to check if there is a service running on the corresponding port. Uh, otherwise, of course, if you want to check if your um, web server is running, you want to check if it's listening on port 80. Otherwise, it's useless that you keep checking and running tests because you know that the program is not working. So for instance, instead for an automation script, this mock test will be um, to run it manually uh, with some basic input and check that the script finishes successfully. Instead, lower tests, uh, these tests verify that the system behaves well when there are lots of requests. So to actually perform this test, we will need to generate traffic to our application and simulate the typical usage of our service and that needs or the, um, can be done either using uh, a Python module or other tools that are available. So we, we said before that we have a, when we write tests before writing the actual code, we are uh, actually writing uh, black box testing, 
we are doing black box testing and that is also called this process of writing tests before writing the actual code is called test driven development and TDD uh, which is test driven development is a development process where we write the code we write the test before writing the code uh, that sounds a bit weird uh, but writing tests before writing any part of our program uh, makes us think um, how our program should behave, what we, it should do, uh, where it could fail, and um, it helps us and provides a lot of good insights and valuable information. So in a test-driven development cycle, cycle uh, the first uh, thing that we do, we first write the test making it fail because we of course we didn't write any actual code then we debug and we write the code to make the test pass and the, from here we keep going writing our next uh, our writing the next part of our program and we repeat this process uh, until all the features of our program are done and the program is complete so um, let's make an example so um, first we uh, we want uh, let's imagine that we want to write a function that um, returns a lucky number uh, so uh, first first we write the test file so let's see how we could do that so we are writing uh, uh, we are following the test driven development process and that's going to be a black box testing because we don't know how our code works because we didn't write any code yet so we start writing a test inside our test folder and let's call it pi okay now um, let's first uh, write the shebang as always now uh, what do we need as we did before for the lower names we need a, a module to test so a unit to test so we need to uh, think about that so we said that uh, the name of the module that we want to test is the uh, first part of the test file that we need to append test underscore test at the end of the file that's the naming convention so we can guess that our module will be called lucky numbers and from here what we want to do is import a function that we could call lucky number like that so you see the id is clever enough to tell us there is no module called lucky numbers so that should be the first thing that we are going uh, to do next so from now for now let's import the module unit test and we are ready to go uh, let's write at the end main function and let's also define the class so That's all basic stuff, so let's uh, make it with path keyword so our code runs. So if we now run this code, we know that it is not going to run the unit test because it fails immediately because it says module not found, uh, there is no lucky numbers um, module, there is nothing. So in our test folder, we didn't write anything. Uh, so let's create this module and let's write a shebang. Let's copy that. 
Now, if we run the code again, we got a different error. We got margin of found, not same error before. And the name of the file is lucky number. And uh, it should be lucky numbers. Uh, what it is? Name. So, the file should be this one. And when we run it, we got a different error. And this time we have import error. Cannot import name lucky number because, of course, our function is our module is empty so we didn't write any part of the code but we said here that we want to import from this module the lucky number function the one that we want to test in here so let's write a function and make the code pass so that we move to the next step uh, where we actually implement the code so We wrote a basic function, and then now let's uh, before we can run this, and we see we got no tests, and the file now is running unit tests, but we did not define any test. But we have created this function because that's the one that we are thinking to use to output a lucky number to the user. So. What we should do now is to write the first test case before writing the actual code. So let's say define test number and self. Now, what we want to test is that uh, we've got the lucky number function. And let's say that we want to pass to this function a number and it should return a lucky number. Uh, so That's our test case, and what do we expect? Expected. So the expected result will be, let's say that we want to get as a result a number like 27. So let's say that our the number that we pass should be multiplied by 9. And let's say a self assert equal and test case and expect. Okay. So let's run our code now and see what we get. And sure enough, we have our first error. So we wrote the first test case and we got an error let's check it type error lucky number takes zero positional arguments but one was given so what does it mean it means that we passed to this function one argument so a positional argument but we actually wrote this function without anything inside so first we need to pass it uh, an argument so a positional argument That should be an integer, and uh, let's run is uh, let, let's run our test again and see what we got. We got another failure because this time we got an assertion error. So we wrote the test, we try to make it pass, and we wrote the function until we make it pass, and then we keep writing out the tests if we want. So uh, the problem is that we did not implement anything, so our function does nothing, and it needs to do something. So, as we said, we want to get as a result 9, so we could simply do that, return the number that the user gives to you when he calls this function, and you multiply it by 9. Now, let's run our function again, our test function, and sure enough, we got a pass, because our first um, Black, black box testing, so using the test-driven development process uh, worked well, and so we were able to 
write the test first and then we wrote the actual code until we made this um, test pass. So we can write more test cases. Um, let's say we don't pass to this number, to the function number. Um, so let's write another test case. So let's imagine that you pass it to it a name, a list, or something else. So def uh, test not a number. So uh, we said that you pass to this function something else, so we want to get an error. Um, self assert type error. You are passing to this function the wrong data type, and let's call the function with the wrong data type. And that should throw an error. Let's run the test. And we see we got a failure because the assertion error says the type error was not right. So we did not implement anything inside our, inside our code that makes this um, actual test pass because we are not throwing any error to the user if it passes to this function a name or a different data type. So we say here that we want the number um, attribute to be a, an integer, but if the user passes something else, we are not showing error, any error, we are not doing anything. So let's check then the data type, Is it the type function, and we pass to the number, and we want to check if it's equal to an integer, then we return the lucky number, Otherwise, we write the error. Type error. So, uh, let's run our test and see what's going on. And sure enough, we make this test pass and we run, we wrote our second um, test case and we wrote the function correctly following the test room development. So, during this video, we used uh, a few of the asserts methods that are available um, via the unit test module. Uh, so we used um, assert equal, assert rises, and assert his, if I'm not wrong. Yes, assert his instance and assert in. So we used roughly four methods. But uh, as you saw before, there are many methods that you can use, so you can make different assertions. Uh, and um, there is a lot to learn about testing, a lot more, but that should give you um, a good starting point. And that's it for this video. I know we just scratched the surface of testing, but Testing requires you to practice a lot to write your actual tests and uh, write the code. So um, be ready to get your hands dirty. And let me know if you like this video. And if you want to learn more about testing, uh, we could make a separate course um, all around testing. In the meantime, the documentation of the unit test module will be in the description. Make sure to check that out. And the Python 3 crash course is officially complete. Uh, I am, however, I am working on a bonus lesson where we will apply all this knowledge uh, and work on a final project together. But um, I'll do it with a bit of time. I need to think about what kind of test, uh, what kind of um, oh, what kind of project uh, we could do together to put all this knowledge in, uh, all together. And so it might take me a bit longer, and I won't publish it before probably September. Um, 
so uh, as I said, if you liked the video, leave a like. If something was not clear, uh, review the lesson or leave a comment. Someone will, uh, I will uh, try to reply to you and to anyone else, anyone that um, writes under the comments uh, on YouTube as soon as I see the comment. Uh, so. Thank you all for watching uh, these courts. I hope you learned something useful for your career. And take care. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.